Okay, in this lesson, we are going to start our study of chemical change, and it's the first part in your notes. So first thing we're going to look at is what is physical change? What does it mean when something goes through a physical change? So first of all, just a reminder of stuff you've known before, is what does the kinetic molecular theory state? And this is how we, it's a model that we use to explain different things about how we see atoms and molecules and substances behaving. So the first thing is that all matter is made up of particles, okay? Those particles happen to be atoms. So that's the first thing. There are spaces and intermolecular forces between the particles. Intermolecular, inter means between, molecular means between molecules. That can also be between atoms. So it's the forces that keep the atoms together. Okay, that's the first one. Then, the next one is the particles attract each other when they're far away and they repel each other when they're qu close. When they repel each other, they have to be very, very close, okay, for them to repel each other. Even if they're just a little bit close, they can't repel each other completely, otherwise we'd never have solids, okay? So that's quite important to get. The particles are in constant motion and they're always vibrating. If, st if, if a particle or an atom starts, stops moving, then we're dead, okay? Then all life is stopped. Particles have to have to constantly be moving. We can't feel it, we can't see it, because it's so, so small, but it has to be happening. So, we need to keep these characteristics in mind when we look at a physical change. First of all, a physical change can occur and be measured without any change in the composition of the substance. The substance has to stay the same. So it's not a chemical reaction. If, we, if I start with water, I must end with water. If I start with sand, I must end with sand. If I, sta if I start with um, wood, I must end with wood. Okay? What does happen? So when we have a physical change, it's always accompanied by a change in the arrangement of the particles. Now, what do I mean by that? That means that the particles change the way they arrange. So they might be close together and now they become far apart. So solid to liquid. Or maybe they were far apart and now they become close together. Okay. Secondly, there's an absorption or release of energy. You spent, you've done this before. That's what happens when there's a physical change, when there's a phase change, which you have done before. During a physical change, um, oh, just here, it's worth going to the FET website, and there's a simulation called States of Matter, which helps you see um, the difference in the arrangement of the particles. It's worth going to have a look. So, during a physical change, the following stays the same, the size of the particles. They can't change. If I have water, so I have water, those are my water particles, whether it's a solid or liquid or gas, they stay the same. The shape of the particles doesn't change. Water particles always look like Mickey Mouse ears. Okay, that's never going to change. And then the number of particles. So if I start with a million water particles before I do something, then I have a million afterwards. Okay, so that's not going to change. Ha what are the type of physical changes we get? Number one, phase change. You've seen this lot. You've been doing this for a long time in science. So phase change, solid to liquid to gas, gas to solid, etc. Change of shape, playing with Play-Doh, plasticine, Rustic, okay, changing the shape, tearing up a piece of paper, that's changing shape, changing color, okay, when I switch a stove plate on and the stove plate goes red, that red is a change in color because it's heating up, there's a physical change, but it doesn't stay that way, okay, changing shape means still, and this is for all of them, chemical composition stays the same, only the shape changes. For example, if I take a steel rod and I flatten it, so they heat it up and then they hit it, they bang it with a hammer and it becomes nice and flat and becomes a nice sheet of metal. It's still steel. I haven't changed that. Clay. When you make pottery, okay, and you change shape and you 
make a bowl or a cup or whatever. That's changing shape, changing color. The chemical composition stays the same. Hopefully you're starting to see the trend here. The color changes temporarily because of heating or bleaching in the sun. Okay, still the same thing. An iron rod or a stove plate heats up and turns red when it's when it's heated, but when it cools down, the color change disappears. Okay? In your textbooks, you really need to look at activity 3 on page 123. Okay? Unit 2. Now we're going to look at chemical change. So we've looked at physical change. Now let's deal with chemical change. A chemical change of a substance results in a new substance being formed which differs in composition as well as chemical and physical properties so it's a completely new thing okay now characteristics first of all how do we know there's one well there's a color change so if I put um, copper met uh, zinc metal in a blue copper sulfate solution eventually the copper sulfate solution will go colorless so there's a color change and the zinc metal will disappear because it'll actually go and become a solution. And the copper from the copper sulfate comes out and we get a very fine powder that's at the bottom. There may be the, there may, okay. Evidence includes, that doesn't mean we always have these, okay. We don't always have these. There may be a formation of a gas. When I put a metal in acid, I get hydrogen gas, okay. The formation of a solid, which is the example I gave you just now. So we get the copper metal at the end. However, this one, there is always a change in temperature. Now, this change in temperature doesn't have to be a increase in temperature. It can be a decrease in temperature. It doesn't have to be so big that we can physically feel it. But if, if we had to use a thermometer we would see a temperature change. Even if it's by one degree, we would see a temperature change. There has to be a temperature change. And then sometimes we'll have a lot, well, there are larger energy changes. It takes a lot more energy to have a chemical reaction change and to have a chemical change than to have a physical change. Okay, so it takes a lot, lot more energy. So we have two types. And these are two broad types. As you go along with your science, you'll realize that there's actually lots of different types of chemical reactions. This is only one set of classifications, okay? So first of all, we get synthesis reactions where I take two simple things, two simple molecules, two simple elements, two simple compounds, and we make a bigger compound. We add them together. So we go substances that combine to form a new substance. So we're combining something. Okay, so we're two different substances. Now I have one. Okay, I'm not worried about the number of particles right now. Decomposition is the opposite of synthesis. So we take something like hydrogen peroxide. So it's a more complicated particle. We do something to it. So we add energy to it. That's the easiest way to do this. And now it's broken up into simple plus substances. It's the reverse synthesis. We're combining things. Decomposition, we're breaking it up. It's quite straightforward. So, during a chemical reaction, chemical composition changes. Always. Chemical bonds, intra, intra means in between. Okay. So, intra is inside, inside the molecule. We break bonds. And then atoms, molecules, or ions are rearranged. So now they change who they're friends with, they change their partners, they change when the new substance is formed, it's got a different shape, there's a different number, and we have a new substance that's formed. What do we need to remember though? The size of the particles, the shape of the particles, and the number of particles all change. Okay, I'm not talking about the atoms in particular, or right, atoms are atoms, they don't change shape or size but how they combined with each other changes. Okay, that's very important. So, what do we have when we have chemical change? We've got to look at the energy changes. So first of all, we get things called covalent substances, which are things like water. 
Okay. Water's covalent. And now we have to for break forces between the atoms. It's actually quite difficult. The atoms and the molecules that we have are then rearranged, and we get new bonds with new substances. We can also have the same with ionic. So this is something like sodium chloride. When sodium chloride is formed, what happens is we actually have Na plus ions and Cl minus ions because the sodium gives away its electron and so now we have a positive charge and a negative charge. They're attracted to each other. That gives us the electrostatic forces. Here we're rearranging ions, positive and negative ions. Once they're rearranged, we form new bonds and we form new substances. Now, when we break the electrostatic forces or we break the bonds between atoms, we have to put energy in. We have to give it energy. So the system, the, the, the particles go, no, no, give me the energy, give me the energy, I need to take it in. Once they've taken that in, broken apart from each other and have now made their new bonds, energy is released. Okay? Energy is released. Pretty straightforward. This process can be reversible, but not always. Not every chemical reaction be, can be reversed. So sometimes once we've made something, we've made it. I can't do anything about that. Okay, then it's made. Then it's very difficult to try and unmake it, if at all. Reversible means that the new compounds can be broken up to form the original. There are reactions which reverse on their own. They don't need any help. They're very happy reversing. There are others where we need to help it. So we have to put lots of extra energy in to get it to reverse. And then there's some, like I said just now, which will not reverse at all under any circumstances. Okay? So you really now need to do activity four. And that's where we're going to end for this lesson we'll carry on next time.